Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids, across our beloved empire to a rather interesting video today. I really want to talk about this. We're going to have a little bit of Star Wars Galaxy Heroes in the background for those that just want to see some Star Wars Galaxy Heroes pixels in your face. But I want to talk about something, kind of a few things. Number one that I want to talk about, we're not going to go into spoilers or anything like that, but Andor just wrapped up. And I kind of want to give my thoughts on the show in regards to Andor, where I kind of place it in this year's lineup of 2022 Star Wars content that was put up. But the thing that really kind of inspired me to sit down and chat with all you fine individuals across their empire today is uh, there's been a lot of controversy and discussion around Star Wars theory. And I want to dedicate a, por a portion of this video today. I'm no by, by no means in communication of Star Wars theory or buddies with them, but kind of want to send them a message. And if they see it cool, I know they know about me vaguely because uh, I'm the king of Trip B, the God's gift of mobile gaming and all that other fun stuff. I primarily focus on gaming, not so much on theory and lore, which this guy is an absolute fantastic person, such a fountain of lore, as well as talented individual when it comes to creating fan films and whatnot. So. Let's sit down and have a little bit of discussion of all this stuff today. So why don't we, Gary, can you, you got something for me? Yeah, all right. Let's go ahead and in the background, let's go roll just some random Cassie and uh, Omicron game that kind of fits the theme for it. Today. We've already talked about Cassie and Andor's Omicron for those that care about Galaxy of Heroes. Well, let's get on to this discussion. Part one of this video is Andor. What are my uh, impressions of Andor? Uh, one thing I want to put out there, this is kind of the one reason why it sparked my curiosity to talk about this topic here is it, at times it feels like Star Wars, especially if you go on social media, it feels like Star Wars is very divided. Whatever opinion you might have, it seems like people, it, it could be a very small minority to act this way. And sometimes the minority is very loud where you can have an opinion and it seems like everyone hates you for having said opinion. The way I look at things is, everyone's gonna have a different perspective everyone has different walks of life different backgrounds and different emotional and physical reactions when they're uh, uh, when they're taking in star wars content and by no means do i think of someone lesser or greater because they have a specific opinion in regards to star wars i think that's one thing that's great is it's such a vast audience and it's great seeing so many people have differing opinions on them of course i have my own i'll disagree with some but by no means does it devolve into a point where people are, are insulting one another so i want to put that out there if you love or hate andor i think nothing less or more of you but i always think you guys are amazing for coming out here so my take on andor this year with this season uh, i can see why some people weren't a fan of the show for me personally i think it's one of the best written best well directed sound it was a very immersive storytelling experience in my opinion is it different from the traditional star wars uh, the blueprint that it follows yes and sometimes that's not a bad thing to kind of break the mold but in regards to a character that i never thought really deserved or needed a show like when i saw rogue one which i was a fan of i didn't say oh my gosh Cassian, we need a show about that guy and to be fair the show wasn't just about Cassian; he was a focal point of the show but the show is meant to show the inner workings of the empire at a level that we didn't quite see and of course the bubbling of a new rebellion that is boiling in the midst of the galaxy right under the empire's nose so i do understand that this show might not have been for some people who like that traditional blueprint which i do that's how i got into Star Wars. i love blasters i love sith i love jedi i love all the stuff that probably made almost everyone fall in love with star wars so i understand this might not be the star wars you technically would enjoy normally because it is you know slow at times it really is it doesn't have constant action it doesn't have tons of cameos the way i look at andor i feel like it it's a show that i would even watch even if it didn't have the star wars label for example i think of house of dragons squid games by no means am I like a massive fan, but I enjoy them because I enjoy the cinematography. I enjoy the drama that's associated. It's a traditional TV drama series. And for me, I enjoyed Andor. And if I had to rank it in the 2022 lineup, I think this is where, you know, Star Wars Theory and I are gonna disagree. I do agree with some of this guy's takes, especially when it came to Book of Boba Fett Kenobi. I feel like I was kind of on par with some of the stuff he was talking about. But for me personally, Andor in 2022, I think it was up there as one of my most enjoyable things, definitely above Book of Boba Fett, as well as Kenobi. And you know, I know there's probably people that disagree with that take, and you know what? That's perfectly fine, and I can see why you might think it's lesser than Book of Boba Fett or Kenobi. But for me, if I had to rank the live action stuff, it would be Andor, Book of Boba Fett, which let's be honest, 
It, it was season 2.5 of Mandalorian that made me put it in that number two slot. And Kenobi number three. And even though I put Kenobi as number three, does not mean I despise Star Wars. I think it's the worst thing of all time. I hate it. I think the direction's horrible. You know, just sometimes things miss the mark for me. Of course, there are tons of moments in Kenobi that I love. And at the end of the day, I'm the type of person I want to watch Star Wars no matter what. You know, not everything's going to be a home run, grand slam, but I can still sit there and enjoy it. But the reason why I think Andor is better, in my opinion, by no means that I have, I'll say this about Andor, by no means that I have moments where I was jumping out of my seats like, oh, 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 and hitting the air horn and all that other fun stuff. But I was sitting there kind of, it was more of a deep level thinking type of show, but, but I, I wasn't jumping out of my seats. And if that's a metric you judge a show, I totally get that. And by that metric, I'd probably rank Andor lower if we're looking at that crazy, raw, like excited reaction that you would get maybe when you saw Mandalorian enter Book of Old Fair, when you saw Darth Vader emerge for the first time and fight Kenobi inside the Kenobi TV show. It depends on the metrics that you're gonna rank the actual show in your particular enjoyment of a particular piece of Star Wars uh, films and, and whatnot. So in, in that regard, I can totally get why the concerns go, because there wasn't a lot of cameos. There wasn't nonstop action. There wasn't moments where you were jumping out of your seat. Uh, oftentimes, most episodes of Andor, I, I just kind of sat there. I took it in. It's like, okay, cool. But uh, didn't have those out of the out of the out of the, out of the ordinary moments of excitement. But another thing that really for me would click the fan. There was a lot of Book of Boba Fett moments, Kenobi moments where I was really pulled out. Uh, the Vespa crew, for example. Uh, moments where I thought Vader's behavior was kind of odd when encountering Kenobi for the first time, of course. I didn't have those take, taken out of the moment situation of Andor. When I watched Andor, the, the, the expectations I had going in kind of, I was met in, in moments, it was superseded. And by no means were there were moments like, oh gosh, I can't believe they did that. Oh, that, that this doesn't feel right. I, I didn't have any of those moments, unlike Book of Boba Fett, as well as Kidobi. And for me, I just think, ugh, I just loved what they did of Andor. Is it my favorite Star Wars live action of all time? No. Mandalorian as of now I'm a I'm a Mandalorian fanboy what can I say I absolutely love Mandalorian I don't think Mandalorian's as well produced or directed as Andor but I feel like it's got maybe like 70 80 percent of the director or the directing capability of Andor but it has that Star Wars magic that flair those moments that get you excited the cameos because that's what I fell in love with in regards to Star Wars and that's why I give uh, Mandalorian a decent edge over Andor but on that note, let's talk about this portion of the video where uh, it gets the Star Wars theory. Now, this is going to be my second Star Wars theory if you're watching, or in general, just to you guys, because I'm making this video for you guys. And as I preface at the beginning, I think Star Wars theory is an incredibly talented individual, extremely passionate about Star Wars. They wouldn't have gotten to the level if <laughs> if they didn't have those, those two uh, ingredients mixed together in this. And I just, and if Star Wars Theory ever does see this, I think they need to, you know, understand, they probably do understand to an extent that when you have such a big voice in a large community like Star Wars, at times it might seem the voices are loud and you're being pummeled. But when you still look at your metrics, the people that come out and enjoy your stuff, I think it really goes to show that people still love what you do out there. And I think one thing that uh, I, I, I really truly believe that I'm kind of like that mediator of the Star Wars Quid here in general. As you, a lot of you guys know, my background, I have a law degree, right? You know, you gotta get something out of a $100,000 degree, right? And one thing that truly, that sh I think the biggest, one of the biggest skills I pulled out of being put through that process of going through law school and then also, you know, helping others once I was, you know, as a law clerk and after passing the bar and whatnot, is you work with people of a variety of different backgrounds, a variety of different opinions, and one of the skills you're taught is to understand both sides of an argument, of a discussion, right? And that's one of the things, like if I needed to, I can fully advocate and to 100% those that despise Andor, but also I can fully advocate for those that absolutely love Andor and they can't understand why these people do not like Andor. And of course I shared my opinion where I definitely was on the more positive side of the experience of Andor. So you can have a personal opinion, but also understand both sides. And I think that's why, that's where I come from where I don't fault anyone for having a different Star Wars opinion for me. And that's where Star Wars theory comes in. Uh, they've been dogpiled, in case you guys don't know. Uh, I think they were trending on Twitter at one point. All the Star Wars Reddits are jumping on them. Long story short, one of the problems of the internet in general is that things can be taken out of context, especially for a big creator, big voice. That happens for me in times of the games I play where 
a particular opinion I have. You know, uh, it could be more of a spicy variety, but when it's taken out of context, the people that maybe don't know you too well or watch your stuff, they have a very different opinion. But the thing that got Star Wars Theory uh, under fire was after the final finale of Andor, they, I will agree, you know, I'll say this. Um, I do respect this stuff, but I do think this was a, a, a kind of a bad take. And I understand that maybe it wasn't a fully fleshed out thought because they're in a live stream format. It was right after watching and they maybe already didn't have that uh, perfect experience or great experience because they preferred that more traditional star wars recipe which again i get that's what got me into star wars as well so in case you haven't heard it i'll, I'll play this kit uh, this clip here and i'd be lying if i said i didn't laugh i did get a good chuckle out of this uh, i by no means do i binge all of star wars theories video like see them from time to time. i watch things like star wars explain eckhart's ladder Star Wars theory, but I don't got time to sit there and consume all this type of Star Wars uh, lore content. But you know, at times I pick some stuff up when I got some free time. So I'll play the clip for you guys so you guys can get the context of why people are dogpiling on Star Wars theory. And then we'll kind of uh, branch off the discussion a bit more. So let's play it, Gary. It's just whatever. It's honestly a kind of a forgettable show. Um, look, acting was great. The cinematography was great. Yeah. The budget was great mm -hmm. the writing was good yeah but it was a lot of little things i mean when we saw the camera in the previous episode there were like screws in the wall when we see certain architecture that's the part where i started i i, I did chuckle i did chuckle because i believe we've seen screws before inside it's of stars bricks you know bricks like smooth stone or sandstone or whatever it might be that was in the prequels or the originals which kind of gives you the feel of star wars the whole thing about star wars is to feel like it's from a galaxy far far and away. that i do agree with that um, part i do, do agree with right there the guns the blasters they look like actual guns you know little things like that took me out of it um i feel like it dragged on a lot in a lot of episodes that that's i think that's 100 valid as well moments that really took took a lot i think my favorite part of the show was probably the, the whole prison um me. It's yeah, so they kind of st cut it off there. So again, just some, I, I'm going to leave a link down below. I recommend you watch his reaction to this so you get the full picture, not just taken out of context situations at times. And also, he made a video kind of responding to him kind of trending on Reddit and Twitter. So definitely get it because I think it's important. You know, a lot of times the internet takes so many things out of context and you need the full entire picture. If I was a friend of Star Wars Theory and maybe I was someone that he would talk to once in a while, I would probably say if I was on a, on a conversation, and again, I'd probably ask them to elaborate a bit more, and then if they maybe held to their ground on this, I'd say, you know what, I, I don't agree with that take. I think that's maybe going a little too far, too far with nitpicks, and of course, when, when you go on Twitter, you can see there's a lot, you gotta admit, a lot of um, hilarious memes <laughs> and pictures in Associates. Retweet the scare Star Wars theory. Oh my gosh, some of these are uh, pretty funny, but we have seen plenty of examples where there's stone, for example for buildings screws and whatnot uh i i think that and again in the heat of moment in a live stream format maybe it didn't come across as well but i think the point star wars theory was trying to get across and maybe he just picked bad examples i do agree there were times where it didn't feel like i was watching a star wars show it felt like i was maybe watching dune uh blade runner or anything of that sort where it was just kind of a futuristic sci-fi tv drama and i liked it so i think that's what they were trying to get across the people is that it didn't have that Star Wars flavor, that pizzazz, that little sugar spice and everything Star Wars nice, the recipe that's thrown in there. And I think that's 100% valid what Star Wars Theory is trying to put out there. And I think it got taken out of context and they took a bad, a perhaps a bad take that I don't even necessarily agree with about the bricks and screws. Although the memes have been funny. I'm sorry, Star Wars, the memes have been pretty funny, but it's not funny when you're on the receiving end of things. That's where I kind of want to talk to Star Wars Theory here. Uh, for a moment, uh, you know, sort of talk to them for a moment, even though we don't really talk here. Star Wars Theory, my man, uh, you're a very talented individual. You're uh, one of the biggest voices in the Star Wars community uh, in general. You're, you, what you do, you make so much magic happen with your fan films and your ideas. You know, sometimes we have bad takes. I have had bad takes on certain things, but the thing that I think I respect you the most for, and I hope you don't change, is that the the snippets and the time i've spent occasionally on your channel i have such a deep respect that even though let's say right now you're considered to have the poor take on star wars you're not going to change who you are you're going to maintain who you are and i think that's the most important thing that genuineness that really i think makes uh, that really is important because if you start noticing someone just bends at the wind it's really hard to know who they are and you, it feels like they don't stand for anything and, and as someone who 
has been bullied online in regards to corporations trying to censor what I say, try to uh, control my narrative, and, I, and I've had to fought against that. I totally get having to go against that grain. And I truly respect you that even though this might be seem like a tough time, I think at the end of the day, uh, from the moments I've seen from you, even though you might not enjoy it, you respect others as well who might have enjoyed it. I think you, we need to keep that discussion. We need to keep that motivation at heart that uh, I wish we had it more often in Star Wars at large, but we need to have a mutual respect for one another here. So for all those that love Dandor, I'm happy for those that don't, that despise, I completely understand. You want that Star Wars magic and maybe with Mandalorian, Coming around, which I'm excited for. I think we might get back to that normalcy where everyone is on the same page. So, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids, let me know your thoughts down below on Andor. I'm looking forward to season two. I hope they keep that cinematography going. It just reminded me at the end of the day, it was a sci-fi drama squid game type of thing that had that just happened to have the Star Wars label on top. But I still enjoyed it nonetheless. But I. Uh, Mandalorian's my baby, and I hope they don't disappoint. So thank you so much for stopping by. Leave that like, comment down below. Hope you enjoyed kind of uh, a different uh, type of video for today, but I love Star Wars, and I figured, you know, this is uh, maybe a good time to talk about it while we're taking a little bit of a break in Galaxy here. So thank you so much for stopping by. And always remember, it's great to be in the Empire today.